We have one final presentation. We have one more round of special guests. Uh, the guests that are on the stage with me right now represent a Fortune 500 company uh, in the midstream space. Um, I have Sean Holmes and Shane Applegate who are going to show you uh, some of the things that they're doing at One Oak uh, to gain business in insights and demonstrate how they have become catalysts within their organization uh, to help out with the folks that they're supporting. Guys, you ready? Thank you, Adam. During the most recent down cycle here at One Oak, we're being forced to look at efficiencies. Regardless of price environment, we still have the responsibility to maintain an integrated network of NGL, gas pipeline, and gathering systems. More than ever, our gas optimization teams are looking at ways to increase their volume sold while still operating safely. To better understand our gas demand, we had to look at its relationship to weather. By factoring in weather, preloading our pipeline sooner, and increasing our park and loan activity, we knew we could move this increased volume. So when we were approached with this problem, we knew we could rapidly deploy a solution for our customers. In addition to what Sean mentioned, one of our main goals for this solution was to consolidate the entire One Oak organization onto a single application for weather data. The reason being is that if operational and business decisions were being made off of upcoming forecasts and weather events, we wanted to make sure that the information was com fr coming from a source that we could verify, in addition to making sure that everyone was looking at the same data sets. Now, when we went to the business with this solution, there were several concerns around what something like this might cost. In addition, they were also concerned about the time it would take to actually build out such a solution and then deploy it to the entire organization. By using ArcGIS, we were able to quickly consolidate layers from the Esri Living Atlas, WDT, and the National Weather Service into a single application, which can be seen on the screen. Now, the app itself incorporates about 20 different weather layers that can all be turned on and off as our end users see fit. In addition, it also has all of our One Oak asset information, so our users can start to get a better understanding of live weather and how it is relating to our operational activities. One of the layers that we have found to be most useful is the surface observation layer. Now, what this layer does is it provides a countrywide temperature gradient coming from thousands of different weather stations. Um, our end users can look at this temperature gradient and quickly identify anomalies and get a better understanding of how those anomalies may be affecting demand on any one of our pipeline systems. So while this overview is great, we also wanted to give the end user the ability uh, to zoom into specific locations and see how weather at that site might be affecting our assets. So let's say Bob from Pipeline Control notices some strange behavior taking place at one of our compressor stations. He might want to zoom to that exact spot and get an idea of all the conditions taking place and seeing if that behavior is related to weather. By using Web App Builder Developer, we were able to actually build out a custom widget that allows Bob to do just that. So let's go ahead and say that Bob notices something going on with one of our assets in the Houston area. All Bob would have to do is open this application, click on the weather widget, and then click on his area of interest. Now the widget will automatically snap to the nearest weather station and give Bob all of the current conditions, a daily forecast, and an hourly forecast for that specific site. Now Bob has all of the information that he would need regarding weather to make an informed operational decision. So while current weather is great, we also wanted to give our users the ability to go back in time and see historical weather information. By giving our optimization team access to a historical weather data set, they would actually be able to dig deeper into the fine details around large draws on any system, as well as other volume-related events. By leveraging Geo, or WDT actually has provided us with a five-year weather poll um, of, average, or of daily temperatures and wind speed. All in all, this came out to be about 30 gigabytes worth of data that we needed to quickly load into our GIS system so that we could enable our end users to start using it. By leveraging GeoEvent Server and the Spatio-Temporal Big Data Store, we were able to load nearly 85 million records into our GIS system in about one hour. Had we used traditional processes and development methods, this is something that we believe would have taken several months to get accomplished. So once the data was in our system, we could then start to utilize the Spatio-Temporal Big Data Store to visualize an aggregation of the average temperature. So notice that as Sean clicks through time, the temperatures will change that is, that is displayed on the map. And we can actually start to look at a cold front 
that is moving across some of our northern assets. So from there, we actually needed to add business value to this data set. While 85 million records are great, if we're not providing any sort of insight to our users, then the data set quickly becomes or loses some of its value. So what we have done is actually overlay this historical weather data with some of our historical measurement data. This has now allowed our user to look further into the relationship between temperature and volume. So let's go ahead and look at the OKC metro area and take a closer look into this relationship. The green circles that are displayed on the map are actual spatial representations of our volumes at meter stations across one of our pipe systems. Let's focus our attention on the meter station that's about 10 miles east of the Edmond area. So notice that on February 2nd, the temperature in the OKC area is around 50 degrees. Now, after doing a little bit of research, we found that this is about the average temperature for that time of year. But notice, as Sean clicks through, and a 15-degree uh, temperature drop takes place, the volume will actually dramatically increase at the meter station. As we continue to go through time and the temperatures stay in the 30s, that meter volume remains at an increased rate. But as the temperatures rise again, notice that those meter volumes begin to go down. By better analyzing this relationship, we can now actually go out to our gas optimization team, and they can make plans to preload this system should a similar temperature uh, drop be forecasted anywhere in the near future. Utilizing ArcGIS, this application took about three weeks to develop and only three months to deploy from start to finish. We can now see returns from even a single weather event. Our gas optimization teams also now use this as a part of their daily workflow to make sure they're maximizing their ROI. We can also increase the safety across our system and reduce maintenance costs by factoring in weather. In our next phase, we plan to introduce charting capabilities, which will allow our users to chart gas supply and weather events over time within a single visualization. Thank you. Thank you, One Oak. Thank you, Sean and Shane.